medium size? What is this, is the cook? Yeah. What's up, What's Dylan up? Purchase? Dylan, nice yeah, to meet yeah. you. Steve's first perch. All right. Oh, yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Oh, look how he ate it, too. Oh, my goodness. Anymore. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. It's a Honda Civic. We got a great deal on it in Alabama and we we're going to see one of my stepsons. So I just noticed that Steve had a Civic and uh, I work for Honda and that's how I fund these trips. So I'm just admiring. I didn't even notice when we were talking about it. We were just sitting there for a, a minute just talking to Laura, his wife. They moved here from Florida. Key West, Florida. Yeah. Check out his gear. You guys might recognize this. <laughs> All about the bait. Steve Nakano, Key West Kayak Fishing. Yeah, I just subscribed to his channel. He's awesome. Yeah, just really quick, just how how do we connect, Steve? Well, I was uh, I watch a lot of YouTube, especially fishing videos, and um, trying to learn more about this Central Coast shore fishing or surf fishing, and um, I came across Edward's uh, YouTube channel and have watched several of his videos. And, um, and I thought I'd reach out because I normally don't do that very much, but I did have good luck reaching out down in Key West and uh, meeting Steve. And then um, I've done the same thing up here and now getting a chance to fish with Ed is awesome. Yeah, so awesome. He reached out to me, like he said, and, and I, had a, I had a message him back because today we are finally doing it. We're fishing on base and uh, <laughs> I haven't been able to have the opportunity. So that worked out. Steve is actually in the military. So thank you for your service. He's actually uh, able to get on a Vandenberg Air Force Base and only military personnel are allowed to go fish this unless they bring a guest and I get to be the guest today. So I get to fish on Steve's turf. He's been out there. He's caught some really big surf perch. He's also caught some nice cabazon. Mm -hmm. Without further ado, we're going to go to Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is about 45 minutes from here. Yeah, it'll take us almost an hour to get oh, to the yeah. where we're going. Exactly. So we're going to check through and we'll see you at the beach. Yes. <laughs> Just arrived. We are at Minuteman Beach, and there's some things I couldn't film that Steve was telling me about because it is top secret stuff. I don't even know if I should have even told you that I couldn't film this stuff. This is missile stuff. This is like national security stuff. What sparked that conversation as well was um, I had planned on sending up the drone uh, to get a bunch of footage out here uh, just so we can, you know, see the holes and before we walk out, but I realized. Yeah, we're on base and uh, there's a lot of sensitive material, so I'm sure I'm not even allowed to fly those and we don't want to risk it, so no drone footage today. But uh, we'll just see how it goes. It's gonna be a good adventure. All right, so got my Shimano Convergence is what I'll be using today. Eight foot six, it's a medium action rod. And then uh, this right here, this is the, uh, Marathon Guardian that <laughs> I found at Dick's Sporting Goods for 30 bucks. So if you guys have a Dick's Sporting Goods near you, I, I recommend this thing. I've, I've taken it out maybe five times now and it's been as smooth as more, my more expensive reels and it's actually made for saltwater, so that's pretty cool. I've been digging it so far. It's spooled up with 30 pound braid and then uh, down to 12 pound leader line. That's just enough to where the Lucky Craft does not get foul hooked on itself or on its on the line. So that's one of the reasons I go with the 12 pound instead of something lighter. Anything lighter and it just seems to foul up on itself because it's so limber that when the wave action hits it, it pushes it onto itself. And then bait of choice is going to be the Lucky Craft Glow Sardine. But it is kind of windy, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly how this is going to go. What do you think? The wind's blowing to the south? We're going to get a crosswind? Yeah. Get a crosswind. Yep. 
I definitely don't want dull hooks to be any reason I miss anything today. <laughs> At least on the back trebles. Let's see. And all the rest look okay. Awesome. So I'm, I'm heading back to the truck. I uh, started walking out on the beach with Steve and there's a gnarly headwind. So just in case I have some grubs that are actually crappie bait, but they work pretty well. So I might have to resort to that. Hopefully not, but I'm going to do it. Sorry, Bobby. This is uh, your secret bait that I just showed everybody on YouTube. But uh, yeah, forgive me. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we don't have to use this, but just in case we got to use these, <laughs> I got them. I have one sliding sinker and I have some leader material, so good. Yeah, right when it turned into that headwind, I was like, no. Who is this guy? He just, he just, <laughs> this guy right here just said, hey, it's right here. Are they? Got some good perch, medium size. Yeah. What's up, Dylan What's up? Burgess? Dylan, nice yeah, to meet yeah. you. Yeah, how's it going? I'm Steve. Dylan, this is Steve. Steve. Nice to meet you. Hey, thanks, bro. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I was... First time I, I've been out here. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little spot. I yeah. got some uh, some pile worms right here off the muscle. We're popping them right here. I'm about to limp it out right now. Really? Yeah. What on the Last one, so. on a pile worm? Hey, thank you. Nice yeah. meeting you, Dylan. Let's fish this spot. It was. Oh, he came off. So you're a subscriber? Yeah. That's cool, man. Take care, dude. How'd you get out here on base? Uh, Steve. Steve's on. Yeah, Steve's uh, in the military. Oh, nice. How'd you get on here? Um, my company. Uh, I work for Smith Electric, so uh, we have kind of jobs out here. Right, right on. Contract. Are you able to show the audience what you're using? Oh, look at that. There's the limit right there. Almost limit. Yeah, some of them are. Smaller, but look, look good pan of fries. Uh, check this out. Pulled about like 10 of them off the muscles. Oh, the pile worm. Yeah, they're not really sound worms though. No. Sweet. Yeah, got some big ones over there. So is that what you usually do? You'll run out here, um, try to use natural bait? Uh, I would like to if I can, especially with low tide, you know, you're able to pull them out. Yeah, you would have to come out low tide and the muscles showing, you know? Yeah. These little guys have teeth right here, so you gotta pinch their heads pretty good. Hey. Just thread them on, huh? Yeah. Been watching the fisherman's life right here. <laughs> yeah. You this worms like this, well, I'll try it. Dude, I love Matt's, man. Love what, watching his stuff. Yeah, I tried out the Lucky Craft this morning. I got one bite, lost it, and uh, all right all right so dylan's letting me share a spot with him uh he is a subscriber of mine god that is so cool never would i thought that i'd run into somebody out here on base that uh watches my stuff so i'm super stoked about that let's get some fish got one on the on the pile worm that's what's up, dude. All right, so Dylan got one last one and he's out of here. But yeah, it does look like a nice little sandbar over on this side. Let's see if we can't get them to bite the Lucky Craft. Ooh, the wind is definitely strong. So condition-wise, we're looking at a two o'clock high tide. And right now it's 1220. So we got an, about an hour and a half until high tide. So this should be pretty optimal in terms of tide. So hopefully, hopefully these perch start getting aggressive. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to a Carolina rig with a small sinker, 
feed that through, throw the little bead on just to keep the knot from getting beat up. Tie on a swivel, grab a piece of leader material. <laughs> got about a three foot leader. Small bait hook, probably a size six. The ones that Dylan got earlier weren't super big, but should be fun. Never know. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, so using a little crappie swim bait, Carolina rig. I did lose a lucky craft, it snapped. Maybe I should go a little bit higher on the line capacity, 12 pound. I was speaking so highly of it, but it snapped. I've just been trying to whip it really, really hard uh, because we got this headwind and I think since I've been using so much force, it stressed out the line too much and ended up losing it. So we'll give this a shot with the Carolina rig. Got one. Okay. Okay. Oh, I came off. No, he's still on. Still on. Little guy. Might have to loosen my drag though. <laughs> Just to make it feel a little bit better. Nice. Little guy. What do you guys think? <laughs> Gosh. On the crappie jig. There you go. Hopefully we can catch something a little bit bigger. It was like a, just two minutes in there. Not bad. Huh. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> hey man, I appreciate you sharing this with me. Let's try to get another one. That guy wasn't very far. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting bit again. Oh, got him. Okay, he's pulling a little bit of drag. These guys are cute. Where's your mommy at though? That's a fish right there. That'll be a fish, promise. Got another little one. I barely felt them on. When you're fishing this rig, you kind of want to work it if you're a bass fisherman, kind of like a football jig, you're just dragging it. Well. Carolina rig it's like pretty much one way to one way to do it it's just drag it a little bit then pause then drag a little bit then pause and what's happening is that sinker ahead of it is kind of kicking up dust and these fish see that and they get curious and then this little grub swims by their face and gets them curious getting bit immediately another small one where are the big ones at and it's funny that I'm asking where the big ones are at when I'm throwing a small bait but that doesn't mean that the big ones won't hit this so I'm just gonna keep on trying to throw this for a little while and maybe just maybe I'll get a big one to hit eventually Ooh, that's a better one that's definitely a better one He's fighting. That's definitely a better one. Dare I say keeper? Dare I say keeper? Maybe, maybe. Oh! That'll make a nice little fish fry. I'm gonna keep this one. Steve's, Steve's first perch. Tell me a little bit about, the, oh, well, once you're done unhooking them. What's that? Tell us a little bit about this thing. It's a bag I learned from some neighbors in our neighborhood just fill it with sand or preferably smaller rocks and it's uh it saves quite a bit from buying lead sinkers all the time so it costs a lot less you can buy as many as you want i think we bought a thousand between three or four of us and so i ended up with like 250 of them and you can use them they'll tear out like this one here is losing some losing some most of the sand now i'll need to refill that but um they're reusable for a while but they won't last as long as sinker but it's a lot less expensive to lose it sure yeah yeah it's got a sandworm on the bottom gulp shrimp on the top on red hooks yeah. look like about what size size two hooks size two and then three yep nice yeah. we got a perch Woo. first one for a little while all right 
I was just telling Steve that even if they're not giants that we're catching, this is still fun. Still nice to fish new water anytime you can. Just get out and discover and you really can't beat it. Fresh air, nice scenery, good company, good friends. Meeting Dylan was really cool today. We've interacted online quite a bit and then finally nice to put a face to the name. Oh, got one. But yeah, I mean, it's just, oh, he came off. No, he, he's still there, I think, maybe. But yeah, as I was saying, it's just there's so many reasons to love this sport and how it brings communities together. Shout out to uh, California Surf Fishing, that uh, page on Facebook, morethanfishing.net, Fisherman's Life page. Just everybody that I've communicated with has been super helpful more than willing to share information, how they catch fish, what they do. So, I mean, I, I'm just really in my element and I love, love doing this stuff. And just like how Steve messaged me, I mean, feel free to message me if you guys have any questions or leave it in the comments if you want to link up. I'm here on the central coast of California. I actually live in Santa Maria. So if you guys want to plan a trip, I'm definitely open Especially if you're on a good bite, of course. But let me know and we'll try to coordinate. I'm in the car business, so weekdays work best for me, but sometimes, like today, I can get out on a Sunday as long as I plan it ahead and we can get out and fish. Oh, got one. Fish on. Yep. Woo! So the trick is, let it sink all the way to the bottom and just keep your, your line tight where the swivel is right up against that sinker. And you can actually feel the bottom contour. And what's happening is as you're feeling the bottom contour, your bait is swinging back and forth as the current comes. And again, that sinker is kicking up just a little bit of sand so that sometimes sparks the perch curiosity like maybe it's a sand crab that's digging itself into the sand or something else that it can eat and it's attracted and then it sees that little bait swimming around whether it's a gulp sandworm, a grub, anything of the sort and that's usually when they pick it up. So just keep that line tight. I haven't seen him yet. Oh, that's a nice one. Cool. All right, there he is. Barred surf perch, California staple. These fish are just so pretty. It looks so good. I love just the, the look of them, the stripes. Awesome. Time to go home. Thank you for biting. I sure do appreciate it. Another one. I literally just let that other one go and I got another one. <laughs> They're stacked in here. There's just not a lot of size. Another. Beautiful barred surf perch. Thank you, buddy. Go get bigger. This is the decent one. I'm gonna keep him. Oh no, he ate it good. I'm definitely gonna have to keep him. He's, he's, uh, he swallowed it. This guy ate it all the way. This guy ate it really deep. It's like in his crushers. So these fish, again, they forage on sand crabs. And in the back of the throat, they got these little bones that really crush them so that they can digest them. So when you open them up and, and clean them, you don't usually find full sand crabs in their bellies. They've been at least crushed a few times that way that at least lets the nutrients come from them. Oh my God, that's a big dog. Look at that thing. Jeez. <laughs> it's always a good idea to check your bait 
because sometimes the tail will come off like that but I've already caught maybe six or eight fish on this thing and finally time to retire it but remember always put your baits back in your pockets because you don't want to leave this out in the water and let a fish eat it because sometimes if they eat enough plastic they just get caught in their gut and they're not able to poop them out and they end up just dying so make sure you just clean up anything that you you bring make sure you bring it back with you so that you can uh, keep our wildlife and our beaches in good health and again what i'm threading this onto is about a, a size six hook you want a hook that's small enough that your bait can keep its action and still look as natural as possible because if you use a bigger hook than what your bait allows it just doesn't look that natural that looks good another little guy another little guy there you go thank you so much are you thinking about moving where, where to? Whoever looks good or better. <laughs> so we will be trying another beach. I guess it's a little bit further up. Let's go. All right, guys, first spot, well, second spot. I'm gonna start off with the Carolina rig again. And then if we get some good action, I'm gonna go back to the Lucky Craft. Oh, got one. I got a bite. Got a snag and bent out my hook. Huh. All right, this beach just looks so good that I am going to tie on the Lucky Craft. I got hit and then I lost him on the Carolina rig. So I'm gonna tie on the good old trusty glow sardine. I didn't mention this, but this is a few days past post frontal conditions and the water is still kind of murky for some reason. Definitely not as windy as that last beach. Got one. On the Lucky Craft. On the Lucky Craft. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. All right. Oh, yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Oh, look how he ate it, too. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is a good fish. Look at that. You got to tie one of these on. Okay. Please. Tie one of mine on without the without the Carolina rig. Without it. Without it. All right. Yes, guys. That is a good fish. Thank you again, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Solid keeper, guys. Solid keeper. That's a beautiful fish right there. Things like three times the size of the one we caught at that other beach. Thank you, buddy. Oh, that was awesome. He hit so close. That was amazing. And I'm tying on my dad's mackerel rig. So all it is is a high-low rig. And the high-low rig just has two. Let me just show you. All right, so after that one fish that I got on the Lucky Craft, I think I really got lucky. I'm gonna go for the mackerel rig. Got the swivel up here. Onto the swivel, I got one liter going to a size four hook. Down a bit, I got I got a snap swivel to a three ounce weight because it's kind of rough out there. And then I got a loop knot. And then I got another liter coming off of that right above the sinker. So we'll give that a shot. Throw some mackerel on there. I got my little strips of mackerel. Here's what they look like, just little strips like that. Take your hook, go 
in through the meat, out the skin, back into the skin and out the meat, just like that. And since we're using bait holder hooks, they have little keepers on them. So hopefully this mackerel does the trick. Let's get it out there. All right, so all we gotta do, cast it out, make sure your line is tight. And what's gonna happen is that three ounce pyramid sinker is kind of gonna burrow itself into the sand and it'll keep your bait there where the strike zone is. So let your let it settle, make sure it's not moving around. There you go. Let some line out. Maybe drag it a little bit towards you. Plant it in your rod holder and just wait. Oh, I'm getting bit. Got him. All right. Oh, he swallowed it on the mackerel rig. I don't really want to keep this size, but I don't think he's going to make it if I pull the hook out from that deep. All right, next cast on the mackerel. Oh no, it might be good. He's all right. Throw him back though. That's what happens. <laughs> Another little guy. Mackerel rig. Well, he's bleeding pretty good, but I'll let him go. I think I'll make it. Yeah, with this rig, you don't need to cast it too far. I'm already getting bit. It's a better one. Definitely a nicer fish. I think that's keepable. Got him. <laughs> Feels decent. Oh, that's what happened. Double. Double. This one looks good. Not so much this one. Oh no! Not the release I wanted. All right guys, got a good double. And uh, this one can hit the frying pan. All right guys, this is gonna be the last cast. <laughs> it's funny, because whenever you say that, it ends up like the, first of like five more after that, but 
it is getting late in the day. So we'll get, we'll see uh, how this goes. What's nice about this mackerel is it stays on the hook really well if you hook it right through the skin. That's a major key when it comes to bait fishing is having it stay on the hook. I'm already getting bit. But if, you're, if your bait comes off the hook, it ruins your chances. And hooks don't get bit well without without bait on them. So make sure you, if you use mackerel, you got to hook them through the skin, and then back out the skin so that it stays. That was really weird. That the first fish was like huge. Yeah. Fish on, on the last cast. On the last cast. It feels decent. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. And then I also got a walleye. Look at this, guys. So this is a walleye perch can't really see him well but that's a walleye perch right there or silver shiner but my barred surf perch is pretty nice look at that <laughs> yeah so this is an awesome trip um, really thank you Steve I know you're probably watching this even if you're fishing right next to me but I appreciate it man I appreciate the invite and uh, the opportunity to fish a spot. Oh, that's fish is peeing on me. Uh, the ability to fish a spot that I normally wouldn't have access to because you need to get a pass to get out here, be accompanied by military personnel, literally. So this was quite the treat. Dinner. What do you think, Steve? It was a good day. It was, it wasn't killer, but we did well and it was fun and fun to get to fish with you. And so, all in all, well, it was a beautiful day. Weather worked out perfect. Oh yeah, no, it was good because uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, but it's been raining the last like couple weeks, and uh, I kind of feel like being indoors too long really gets to you, and then all you're thinking about is fishing. And uh, like, well, what I do when I'm indoors is I just sit and watch fishing videos. All well, I watch a lot of YouTube fishing <laughs> videos. My <laughs> wife will attest to that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but well, this was fun. Yeah, thank you thank so you very much. much. It was good. Just to recap real quick, I thought this new spot when we caught that first fish, I was just like, yes, on the lucky craft. And uh, <laughs> I was celebrating so much, handed Steve uh, one of my lucky crafts. And, uh, but um, I ended up tying on the mackerel rig and so did Steve. Um, used a uh, size four hook, so they were tiny. They were tiny hooks, so they've swollen them every time. I might have to go for a longer shank. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. We will catch you on the next one. Anything you want to leave leave everybody with? I just want to thank Edward for taking the time and, and giving me this opportunity to come and do this together. It was a lot of fun. I'm very appreciative. Oh, yeah, I love connecting. I love it. It's 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 really good. Again, Steve connected with me, left a mess, a comment uh, below. I read every single one of them, and I do appreciate every comment and uh, feedback, and I uh, appreciate the likes and shares. So uh, if you want to continue to uh, join the journey, definitely hit that subscribe button and tick the notification bell. All right, now we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>